Okay, great. So, welcome everybody to the 2018 edition of the Debian Electronics Buff. Um, this is meant to be an opportunity for us to share information um, about what's happening with packages that are used for electronics design and related tasks that are in Debian. Uh, it's a little bit different than last year. Last year, um, I asked for a Debian Electronics Buff because we were sort of in what I thought was a slightly desperate situation with not enough people working on the electronics packages to even sort of maintain the status quo. And uh, I'm very pleased that um, several folks have uh, sort of popped up uh, since the session last year. Um, and as a result, I personally think things aren't in too bad a shape at the moment, but um, very much the same as in the past. Um, I think there's a, <clears throat> a real value in our sort of talking as a team and as people who are interested in these packages. Um, so I was going to propose that maybe um, a good way for us to spend the time today is to talk a little bit about progress that's been made since last year. Um, I'm happy to talk about a little bit of that, but then others of you that have been working on things are uh, using various electronics packages that know more about those packages than I do, I hope will chime in. I assume there's got to be, yeah, it looks like there are a couple of mics down there we can pass around to there's one in front here and one there on the table. So when the time comes, we can pass those around. Um, I have one open question about packages that I'm helping to maintain in the electronics team that I'd love to talk about just a little bit. And if there are other open questions with other packages within the electronics realm, this seems like a great chance for us to talk about those. And if there's any decisions we can help drive towards, that's great. And then generally, you know, what can we do going forward to do an even better job of maintaining the various electronics tools that are packaged in Debian? And for those of you who don't know, I went ahead and stuck the URL on the slide here so it would be quite visible in the video and so forth. Uh, as to where you can sort of find the root of pointers to follow about things that are happening in the electronics team. So I think for lots of teams in Debian, not just electronics, one of the big things that's happened in the last year was we moved a bunch of package repositories over to the new Salsa infrastructure within Debian. And in the process, there was a little bit of sort of name shuffling and, and cleaning up of the group name. So, uh, Electronics-team is where you'll find all the electronics-related packages within the Salsa infrastructure. I looked earlier today, and as of this morning, we have 15 current members identified in the Electronics team on Salsa, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know that all of those are actively working on stuff, but we've had a couple of folks join just, I think, in the last few days, and uh, hopefully we see continued interest going forward, more people wanting to join the team. I think I counted about 26 source packages that are currently in the electronics team group there. There are, I think, other pieces of software that are flagged as being in the electronics section in Debian that are not currently on Salsa under electronics team, and there's, of course, nothing wrong with that. But I would certainly encourage anybody who's maintaining electronics-related software in Debian that's not already inside the electronics team to at least consider the idea of uh, joining the team, helping to maintain the collective set of packages that are useful for electronics stuff and maybe getting some help maintaining the pieces that they're working on outside of the context. Um, and then sort of the last thing that I think I can do reasonably effectively because I am sort of in the middle of it um, is talk a little bit about what's going on with the particular schematic capture and printed circuit board tool set that I use the most, which is the GPL EDA or GEDA suite. Um, and so let me just rattle through a little bit. Um, the sort of main design capture um, tool, sort of schematic level capture tool, is this thing called GEDA GAF, which uh, produces the schematic tool GSCAM and various related stuff. There have been some minor packaging updates in the last year, but we're still on upstream stable version 1.8.2. There has not been an upstream stable release in a really long time. 
And I will tell you that I personally see crashes in GSCEM from time to time. And there's a really weird rendering bug where every once in a while it's like text rendering just goes berserk. And if you refresh the screen or change the scaling or something, it fixes itself. Um, and so there are clearly things that, you know, even as a regular user of the tool, I stumble over all the time, but just haven't been motivated to try it and track down. And part of the reason for that is that um, Upstream is now up to something like version 1.9.2, which they explicitly tag as an unstable release. On the other hand, when you ask questions about things, it's not unusual on the list to be uh, to have it pointed out that, oh, that's fixed in you know, current head in the repo. And so one of the things that I find myself scratching my head about is if slash when it would make sense for us to package the upstream unstable 1.9.2 if, in fact, it turns out to fix some of the known bugs in 1.8.2. Um, but I haven't sort of, you know, gotten enough uh, enthusiasm or momentum towards doing that to, to actually do something. If there's anybody else here that um, is using GSCEM and friends and has an opinion about that, I'd love to hear it. If there's nobody in the room that's using the stuff and folks who are watching the stream or see this video later want to send me email and give me thoughts, that would be great. I'm one of multiple people who helped to maintain that set of packages in Debian, so I'm not the only person with an opinion. Um, does anybody have something they want to throw out right now about that, or is everybody kind of not caring? Whatever I do is just fine. Yeah, yeah, smiles around the room. Okay. Uh, the second thing I'll mention is I mentioned last year that the GEDA GAF um, package was being forked by another upstream community to create a set of tools called Lepton EDA. Um, Lepton as a name is a little bit unfortunate because <coughs> there is already a Lepton for a totally unrelated thing packaged in Debian, but you know, that's our lives. Um, it appears to me, though I haven't really been following it super closely, that 1.9.4 is the latest Lepton release. Um, they forked, I think, late in 2016 and have been working. Um, I have not seen anybody actually package that for Debian. I guess one of the things that we could consider is whether that's worth packaging and bringing in either in addition to or in parallel to packaging the 1.9.2 version of GEDA GAF. Um, my only concern about that uh, has to do with sort of the extent to which either or both of those uh, teams is paying attention to the PCV R&D fork of PCV, which I'll get to in a second. Um, with respect to the tool PCV, which is the printed circuit board design tool in this particular suite, um, in the last year that's been updated from version 4.0. something to 4.1.2, uh, mostly bug fixes, a few changes in the way um, uh, units are recorded in design files. So if you use the current version of PCB, you want to be a little careful about thinking that you could go back to previous versions and not have a little bit of a data issue with the file format being tweaked. Um, but right now, 4.1.2 is working just fine for me and all the things that I do. Um, however, there was this uh, project I talked about some last year it's a fork that's been going on now for at least four, maybe five years of PCB, uh, which is now essentially a completely new tool called PCB-R&D. Some really dramatic percentage of the source code has now been replaced. A lot of internal data structures and, and code structures have been reworked. Um, PCB-R&D is interesting to me because it allows me to sort of carry forward all of the designs I have in PCB and all of the effort that I've put into library parts um, for both schematics and printed circuit board work and in general the same uh, process flow for moving from schematic capture to printed circuit boards and so on that we have with PCB. But PCB R&D has a new file format. Um, it now encapsulates the concept of pad stacks within footprints and sub-circuit support exists. And um, one of the things that um, I, there's really no easy way to do with a footprint in PCB that you can do in PCB-R&D is have features in the outline layer, which means things that printed circuit board shops uh, need documented in the outline layer for creating things like slots uh, for tabs on a, on a 
part don't have to be quite as hackishly handled as they were in the past with PCB. So I'm personally actually looking at moving some or all of my designs over from PCB to PCB-R&D in the next year, um, starting with a design that I'll probably be moving you know, next week. Um, the, as a result, I've been personally packaging PCB-R&D and tracking upstream quite closely. Um, and that's currently at version 2.0.0-1, which is the latest upstream release. And then I was just, people ask all the time, so I put um, one of the examples of a board that Keith and I did in, in this tool chain. Uh, that circuit board's about, I don't know, yay big. It's a whole lot bigger on the screen than it is in real life, but for those that are watching the stream and trying to figure out what electronics tools are all about, it's to allow you to design things like this. So with that, the stuff that I feel like I have to contribute to the BOF is pretty much done. Things that I think would be really interesting to hear from somebody else about are the status of the KiCad tool chain for doing printed circuit board designs and that other major tool set. If there's anybody here that wants to talk to that. Um, Noodles, I know that you've been doing work on things like Open OCD that are also in this space. It'd be really cool to sort of hear what's going on there and what the status is. And anybody else that has stuff that you'd like to offer sort of progress and status reports since this time last year, that would be really great. There's a couple of microphones down here. If we could kind of, if anybody that wants to add some additional progress stuff would jump in, let's do that, and then we can open up and take questions. Um, yeah, so Open OCD uh, wasn't in great shape last year. I've pulled it to the latest upstream release and sort of triaged a bunch of the bugs. Uh, we had one particularly embarrassing security issue this year that involved me having to do backports to pretty much every release that we currently had out there at the moment. Um, I think the main thing about it is I'd like to see a new upstream release. It doesn't actually have ARM64 support. It's like 0.10 is the current open OCD release, and it's from January 2017. Um, and they've done a lot of work upstream on getting ARM64 support working in it, and that would be nice to see. Um, I don't really want to get involved in doing a backport of upstream work on that because there's just been so many changes to that. But uh, I've had a few interactions with upstream, so I might poke them and go, hey, any odds? Um, the other piece I've been working on is the whole SIGROC tool chain, so that's um, Logic Analyzer. Um, again, uh, Upstream is actually a Debian developer but just didn't have time to look after it, so I took over from that and again it's up to date. Um, that's actually been quite useful for me because it's now working in ways that it wasn't previously. Uh, I, I got a question in terms of um, electronics design we cover in the, the, the um, team, we've got some tools that are about electronics tools such as JTAG and, and Logic Analyzer. Um, the other piece that I know you and I have discussed, BDL, are um, compiler tool chains for embedded devices. Yeah. So um, I did a rather cack handed um, NMU of SDCC this week, but it seems like a tool that is useful for embedded devices that very much fits in the embedded space. And today I've been spending um, some time on a full GCC tool chain for the ESP266, which again doesn't fit into anything that runs Linux, it's an embedded space processor. Now, SDCC is small enough, I can say, right, I think that should be part of the team. A full GCC port seems a little bit too heavy, but I wondered what anyone else's opinions on the whole matter were. I'd actually, Keith, if you wanted to jump in and talk a little bit about the GCC ARM for embedded things that you did. Um, I know you and I are planning to talk about that in more detail tomorrow, but the part of it that might be relevant here about, you know, where's that package in the archive and where does that stuff live and is this relative to it? Yeah, we have a, wow. Uh, so um, the GCC, GCC can obviously be compiled for a bazillion different targets. Um, one of the targets that we have for ARM right now is obviously the regular Linux ARM compiler. Uh, what we need, what I needed instead, was uh, was GCC compiled without any libc dependency, so that I could use GCC in a libraryless embedded environment. Uh, that turns out to actually be impossible. Uh, GCC requires a libc, uh, but you can compile it without any operating system requirements. It doesn't depend upon any operating system infrastructure. Uh, so there is in the archive a GCC ARM none EABI, which is to say it doesn't depend on any operating system interface. Um, and it uses the EABI. And in for an embedded environment, you don't care what the ABI is because there's no library there. 
Um, one of the big problems that I've had with embedded systems is finding a libc to use. Um, in uh, the uh, GCC AVR world, there's an AVR, a special libc for that, for that, tool, for that tool chain. Uh, SDCC comes with a libc for SDCC. Um, GCC ARM none EABI depends upon Nanolib. Uh, Nanolib actually requires a POSIX operating system under it in the default uh, compilation mode. Uh, so we actually don't have a good libc for embedded systems yet. Um, I've been hacking around with a Nanolib uh, that uses, uh, that replaces the, the standard I.O. bits from Nanolib with uh, the standard I.O. that comes with the AVR libc. Um, and that's almost a good idea. It's really a very nice little embedded uh, standard I.O. library that I'm pretty fond of. Obviously, it's not high performance, but in my embedded environment, standard I.O. is used for debugging only. Uh, so it'd be great if we had some standard mechanism, common mechanism across platforms for a libc that was used for embedded systems. Uh, Nanolibs is as close as we have right now, but it's not quite there. Um, the way that I initially packaged the GCCR ARM NUN EABI compiler was to take our standard libc, our standard GCC source, um, had a set of patches on top of that, so you'd, you, it had a, a build dependency on the GCC source package, which is not a source package, it's a binary package in the repository that actually installs the source code to GCC in your system. So when you install the GCC source package, you get the sources to GCC installed in your machine in a way that you can then compile, build a compiler from them. So all of our usual GCC targets use that package as, their, as, the, as one of their build dependencies and then just compile it with the appropriate options. Uh, the, that's, and that's what I did with the original port of the GCC ARM none EABI compiler. Um, right now, the, maintain, the current, another person who's maintaining that package, August, um, I'm not sure, uh, uh, Augustin uh, Henze has uh, decided to instead incorporate the sources to GCC into the package. I'm not quite sure why. I may go reinvestigate that. But it's really useful if you're building an embedded GCC tool chain to use the standard Debian GCC sources. That way you get the uh, common upstream set of, you know, somebody else is maintaining the bulk of your compiler, which is awesome. So you get security fixes, you get upstream integration, you get backports, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's a really great way to start, and I think I'm going to go fix the ARM EABI NUN one. I know um, Noodles has been doing that for his, his tool chain. So that's, it makes a really small source package. You literally have a, source, a build dependency on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on our the GCC source package, um, a small set of uh, host-specific patches, which could eventually get integrated into our, ups, into our shared GCC source package, and then just, you know, uh, here's the target. Here's the target architecture. Go build the compiler. So I guess there's two detailed questions. Then one is, what section of the archive should that package live in, and is it something that sounds like it would be appropriate to put under the electronics team on Salsa, or does it just live somewhere else and we don't care? And, uh, and more precisely, to answer, you know, help answer Noodle's question of what he, should he do with the ESP version of this if he ends up building something he wants to put in the archive. I don't know what area it should live in. Yeah, good question. I'd, I'm not really sure I know either. Um, there, and this is one of those things where it's like, okay, who's going to care for this? Well, it's unclear to me that anybody outside of electronics team space is really going to be wildly enthusiastic about embedded systems programming, which is where these compilers really get used, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe a different, and I'm, I have no answer for this uh, embedded systems, but a different question is um, we have a lot of electronics packages maintained in Debian science team, and we have a lot of packages maintained by non-team. Do you intend to um, try to get this same under, the, under your same policy in, in your same Salsa uh, um, uh, group? Because I think this would be would, make perfectly sense to, to collect the electronics do you, people. Do you have an example or two of the package? Sure. Uh, do you know this blends uh, uh, page of Debian Science Electronics and you can show and then all people can see? I have a lot of stuff. Uh, I, um, can, I can pronounce the, or should I put it in IRC, the, the, the link? I'm not on IRC at the moment. So then I, I will tell you, it's blends.debian.org. Hang on one sec. Yeah. We could actually to a browser. And I need to shove it over there. Hang on. Uh, 
Hey, that actually almost worked. Wow. But I can't see it now. Oh, I get too complicated sometimes. Sorry, people. Okay, so where is it? Blends. L-A-N-C-E. Blend? No, blends. Blends, blends, blends. Sorry. Blends. Dot Debian. Dot org. Slash science. Slash tasks. Slash electronics. Electronics. There's a C missing. Yeah, if only I could see what I was doing. Electronics. Yes. Yes. Enter. And there you see a list of all those packages which somebody, probably, most probably not you, considers uh, electronics relevant. Yeah, so the, it's interesting. The Arduino stuff is another kind of weird example in this space, right? Um, because it's also like, I guess it depends on GCC AVR or does it, I don't know. But it certainly provides an ID on top of that. And you have a lot of uh, packages maintained by Debian science maintainers, uh, private people, and, and there are only a very few, uh, the minority is maintained by the Debian electronics team. And my question is, would it make sense to invite those people like Milan Kuchewicz to package AVR dude in the Debian electronics team, use the same policy and enable all maintainers Doing, applying something. Sounds like so much work. Um, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed about it, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the fact, for example, that AVR Dude is packaged in Debian, yeah, but sure. I don't, as to where it happens, mm -hmm. um, I, do you have a sense one way or the other? Would you love to well, see I, some of these things I, I go did, away? Or, I, I did, mean, no, no, I, I did this with the Debian uh, Meet stuff because um, this was the only way to make sure that we have all packaged, maintained in kind of the same quality and uh, makes them up to date. And so I'm, I'm not sure how it's with, with the electronic stuff, but um, we also... Yeah, so there's an interesting overlap here because the, the GEDA stuff, I mean, it's mentioned here, but that is actually, that's the GEDA GAF package in the electronics thing. GCC AVR is showing up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another... Like, yeah, I, I even don't know who is maintaining this list. This, these blends tasks are maintained by um, Debian science people, and they, 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 what you, the only thing what you give is depends uh, package name. This okay, is a, so this is a somebody blend. From the I get it. So yeah. this is a task which contains a list of packages yeah. that people think are relevant to science slash electronics. Yes. Got it. Okay, so there's no particular. So, so this is the same problem I identified before, that there are a lot of things electronics people care about that are not actually within electronics team. Yeah. And I don't, you know, what I care about is that they're actually being attended mm. to. Okay. And if they're being well maintained and nobody's stressed mm. about it, I don't care if it's under electronics team or not. Okay. I would certainly invite anybody yeah. whose package shows up somewhere like this. This is what I mean, yeah. yeah. I, you know, if, if anyone who maintains a piece of software that's in science task electronics wants to come, mm -hmm. you know, put that package on Salsa under electronics team and collaborate with the rest of us, that'd probably be just fine. Uh, one, one further remark, please. I want to respond to one of your okay. points. Um, I think you have an, well, either I'm not aware of it or, or we just don't have one but there's no coherent policy between the team about how the packages are maintained. It's a central point where people are maintaining packages, but we don't have a team-wide, this is how you do things. There's some advice that goes on on the list, but um, yes. don't put too much stock in that. It's a convenient place to put packages that I think are often used as tools for the <laughs> thing you want to get done rather than the, the end and of, and of themselves, and therefore having lots of people who are potentially interested able to work on them is the benefit the team offers. Yes, we don't have like one grand unifying how we're going to package things policy. We are very much loosely organized in that I, there are many packages of the 26-ish source packages in the electronics team that I've never looked at or used, much less work on. So it's, yeah, 
I, I don't think we have a really simple answer, but I would certainly invite anybody maintaining a package that's on this list to consider whether joining electronics team would be helpful. My, my point is that the Debian electronics team is not widely known under the Debian maintainers. It had almost completely vanished this time last yes. year. And yes. so what we're trying to do is kind of get things back up to speed. And honestly, if someone came to me at some point and said, you idiot, why aren't you doing it some other way? I think, you know, we would all smile and go, thanks for educating us. But um, right now, uh, those of us who are actually working on the packages that are in the electronics team uh, repos I, I, don't know of anywhere else to put them. So I think I have quite a good overview about all this kind of uh, topic related stuff and the electronics was kind of escaping of my okay. tennis, so. And the other thing is, uh, I want, want to say is, would one of the team uh, mind about maintaining this task inside the Debian Science team? Because this task is probably quite orphan. And, and some, at some point in time, has, uh, somebody sat down and said, what's electronic relevant and put on this list? But this is probably we have more packages that, that are relevant for electronics and not mentioned here. And maybe there is some stuff inside which is questionable. So this would be really cool if somebody from the team who knows the stuff would check this task. I'm curious enough to at least take a look at it one time. Yeah. I don't know that I'm willing to commit to trying yeah, to help maintain this. It's, it's not about you, but if you have 15 yeah, people. I, so that, that's part of the answer, yeah. though, is I personally yeah. am interested enough. I will take at least okay. one look at it. Maybe some of us can sit around in a hack lab or something and scroll through and see what's interesting. In particular, if there are things that pop out as not being well maintained at the moment that we ought to try and suck in and, you know, um, rescue the packages as was being discussed this morning, then, you know, maybe that's a way to identify some potential targets. Did you have something else you wanted to throw in or just the right? So uh, is there anybody here that uses or helps maintain the KiCad tool chain? Carson, you want to talk about that a little bit? What's happened in the last, or any of you, yeah. I'm not m maintaining the KiCad library, but our, our um, company uses KiCad to develop electronics devices. So we are trying to make some patches for new features for KiCad. We are, maybe we can uh, push that part package, push that patch into the upstream. This is what we are going to do. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Carsten. I'm packaging the KiCad package since two years, I think, now. Yeah. And yeah, just to mention, patches welcome, plus please go upstream. That's the best way to do. I don't want to add patches that just exist in Debian <laughs> and other people and users but also useful for and I don't want to diverge much from, from upstream, so the correct way would be please go upstream first. Yeah, KiCad 5 is alive now for three weeks, two three weeks? weeks? Yeah, three something. weeks, two weeks. Yeah, um, this was a little bit yeah, a big, difficult sometimes. A big project, okay. yes. Uh, not from the Debian side, more from the upstream side. Um, People are happy to get new contributors and to new maintainers, and it's a little bit sometimes, say it, a chaotic, uh, but okay. Uh, we've done it. I've got some communication with uh, Sean Renault, I think it's the name. It's, he's doing the PPA for Ubuntu, and we got some common sense how to do the package layout, and so we mostly found we are now given packages or living packages. So they can live in Debian and Ubuntu as well. And if people are using the PPA, it's not that big hassle for users. So it's just an upgrade of packages. And if we go down, OK, we don't use PPA. Um, I also got some conversations to upstream as well. And mainly I do also the German localizations. If I got time in the past few months, I got not that much time to update the documentation for the the e schema and all the tools inside. So I mainly get the focus on uh, updating the documentation of the LTNN strings. And 
Yeah, Angie Spice is still living in a new queue. If someone wants to poke with FTP masters, it's living since two months now. And I would be happy to enable also some simulation stuff once uh, NG Spice is enabled, uh, uh, accepted into main because upstream was very friendly and communicated also to me and take a big advantage to just with version 28 get rid of all the non-free stuff. Yeah, I was excited to see that. Yeah. But this was quite easy, more or less. We just so that's need still to sitting in. What kind of stuff would be, would be needed to be done? And right. I'd say, what, what, what? Okay, we will do it. So that's good. It. So that's still sitting in the in yeah. MQ right now. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we can poke somebody here while we're yeah, here. Yeah. Maybe, but just don't want to poke <clears throat> Lemby or. or yeah, I understand. Or so. I understand. And it has such a complicated history. I can completely understand why it might put the fear in someone to want to deal with it. But yeah. Do you want to jump in? Yeah, uh, so because you asked for users, so we are also using um, uh, KiCad um, uh, with the Pocket Science Lab. Um, I don't know, may, maybe some of you might have seen it. We have put it on the table um, here um, on the ground floor. So, um, yeah, and uh, we are moving now to production, uh, to producing more. So we have a few feature requests. I don't know if you have good relationships to upstream. Uh, let's talk later more in details. For example, like, as, um, like commercial producers have some um, uh, specific requirements, for example, uh, some different formats and so on. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting to see like completely uh, open hardware, free hardware to move to, to production here with, uh, with KiCad. So the whole um, chain, yeah, all, all layers are free. Yes, yes. And by the way, those who haven't noticed, uh, Keith and I'll be doing a talk tomorrow, I don't remember what time, on how we're using entirely free stuff in the design development of the electronics and the actual rockets that we fly in our rocketry hobby. So that's sort of a use case example and why we do all that and the various ways we've ended up contributing back to Debian as a result. So, yeah. So other thing, uh, you've got, some, what do you want to jump in on? Yeah, um, I'm packaging GHDL, which ah. is um, the VHDL simulator. Um, I've been doing that for a while. I already all uploaded um, in February, but uh, the package was rejected because of a problem, and um, that was the Zero uh, Thirty Five, um, the last, uh, latest stable, the latest release at least, um, and so the libraries got a bit uh, different and. So I've been redoing the packaging um, because, um, well, in, including the external libraries, um, changed and actually got better. But um, yeah, I wasn't working that much over the month. Uh, I hoped to upload it before today and um, didn't manage it, but it'll be soon. It's, it's a bit of a complicated package because, yeah, it supports. Uh, it's a compiler and it supports uh, right. internal backend. It uh, supports LLVM and GCC, and I decided to put them all in. And yeah, so the support that comes with it, uh, which is uh, free software, is uh, VHDL 93, and um, it needs the official IEEE libraries uh, for VHDL 2008 support, which I then we'll have to package as a non-free uh, binary, which, is, uh, which will come later. And since I had to integrate that somehow, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a bit longer, but it'll come soon. Is it all feeling good, or are there things various of us could try to help you with while we're all here at DevConf? Um, no, I've been working with it myself, and um, there's Oh, there's uh, a lot of decisions on how to organize it, and well, I'm finalizing finalizing on something, and I think once okay. I got it um, uploaded, I think I can share some. Okay, of very cool. Um, yeah, certainly. While we're here at DevConf, if there's things that we can do to help each other out, that would be great. But yeah, uh, other people that are yeah, you want to jump back in, Noodles? <clears throat> if there are other things people are maintaining or working on or want to talk about, let's just dive right in. I have a question about the pocket science stuff. Um, you're using a PIC24 chip. Do you have an open tool chain for that, or are you using the horrendous MP Lab stuff? So, um, actually, uh, yeah, we're using a PIC24. It's, uh, no, uh, um, it's not open. 
um, because like we base it on a previous project. So uh, we, we actually uh, iterated from there step by step and then also we moved to uh, KiCad, yeah? So we're moving like making it uh, open step by step. The idea is like maybe a uh, next version move to ARM, um, but like actually there are always a lot of small things to improve and uh, at some point you have to decide to like make a version, maybe go into production because we're also developing software for it. So we want more developers who can like uh, work with the device and uh, use the software and so on and, and get it out into the education. So everything like from making the hardware to like uh, getting like um, free education materials for schools or like have startups use it or whatever, that's our idea. But yeah, as you say, and the chip itself is also not free and open, right? So anyone who wants to provide us with a free chip, <laughs> I know, that's a big challenge, right? Yeah, I, I hate picks. The ecosystem is terrible. Um, in particular, I, I play with the Bus Pirate, which actually ties into some of the logic analyzer stuff, and it's a lovely device. But trying to compile stuff for it because it's a pick twenty-four is a complete pain. Yeah, and Keith and I had this interesting experience that we had a device that we built around an AVR at one point, and then we kind of went and looked when we were talking about maybe manufacturing some, and realized that we could buy. 32-bit ARM core SOCs for less money than we could get either AVRs or PICs for. That's not always true. It depends on how much I.O. and what capabilities you need and so forth. But I've been really impressed at how much the price on the ARM stuff has come down. And since that does have a really great free and open tool chain available for most of it, and you know we figured out how to do source debugging on most of them <coughs> um, with open OCD and other things, that that seems to be a pretty good place to land right now. I'm personally really, really interested in Risk Five, and I'll be showing up at the Risk Five buff tomorrow with a couple of toys, and we can talk more about that in that context. That is sort of peripherally related to electronic stuff, but or at least to me it is, because to me it's all about getting chips designed. But you know, yeah, whatever. Other folks have things they want to throw out, talk about questions. I've started yeah. a project which is uh, which is all using free software and free tool chains to make uh, to make some electronic devices. So my keyboard here is all designed by KiCad and the program. The chip on it is STM32. I use ARM9 EBI GCC for for uh, source code compiling and uh, uh, so uh, so it's a pretty pretty. A free hardware, I think. So, That's cool. Yeah, I think the development in uh, Linux is getting better and better. Yeah, I'm pretty optimistic for Risk Five. Yeah, I I already got got one, but but I'm not not started the Risk Five development yet. Yep. Since you mentioned, if we have questions, uh, for instance, I'm currently developing, uh, well, I guess you could call it a peripheral in the sense that it's a board that is meant to be attached to a regular Linux machine, preferably a Debian one. And um, I was wondering, do, uh, do you think uh, it um, makes sense to do things like actually packaging the firmware for the, for the devices in the archives so that uh, so that people can actually just get an already built version of the firmware from Debian instead of, you know, from me. So putting binary firmware into Debian is something we've talked about at various times. No, in the I, past. I mean, uh, putting the source firmware in the archive, and so that people can get yeah, a I totally binary understand image that. built by Debian. So actually, I mean, the products that Keith and I build are all supported by binaries that are built uh, from the Altos source package, which is in Debian, and we ship the binary firmware for all of our products in the Debian binary package. So at least in our case, that's an example of where we're already doing that. Um, I know that if we start talking about really huge firmware images, then the archive maintainers might have questions about how important it really is to put that on all of the mirror network. But 
Um, I really like being able to just, you know, apt install Altos anywhere and have all the stuff I need. So I've actually been, um, we've been talking about at some point, maybe if I ever get around to it, refactoring so that instead of delivering a single binary package from our growing in size source package, we might split it up because there's really no reason for all those firmware binaries to be rebuilt on all of the architectures, auto builders. But, you know, compared to some of the really large packages in Debian that take forever on the auto builders, it's really not a huge big deal. So we just haven't worried about it very much yet. But I would think as long as we're not sort of abusing the use of the mirror network, um, I can't imagine why it would be a real problem. I certainly hope it's not a problem because I'm doing it. Anybody else? Sorry, you, yep. said the, you said the source package was Altos? A-L-T-O-S. Okay, I'm cloning it right now. It's big, sorry. <laughs> well, hello, hello. Uh, it, it maybe it's not related to, to most of the people here, but uh, actually I, I discovered that there's a com completely open source tool chain from uh, Synthesis. Uh, uh, Maybe I just need to put, put up some background. Uh, there is a, a brand a manufacturer of FPGA that is called Latis, and they have a, a series of FPGA board that is called Ice40. Yeah. And they have the open source fortune, and I, actually I have tried uh, the open source fortune that was once listed, listed on the, the lens that is works pretty awesome. <laughs> and actually I have burned the RISC five core on it and it works like charm. So I'm pretty optimistic that one day we'll have a completely open source torture and to educate our maybe college student or graduate student to do their development. So thank you so, for So you've actually burned a working RISC five implementation using an entirely free tool chain into yeah. a lattice part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, dude, I hope you show up at the Risk v BOF and talk about that a little bit tomorrow. Uh, for sure, yeah, and, and I think that it is quite simple because the, the example itself is work out all of the box. <laughs> right, so okay, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. I did not know you could do that with stuff that's in Debian right now, so I'm actually quite excited to hear more about that. Okay, I, I will take the development board. Actually, I, I forgot to bring it here, or I can just show you right away. <laughs> yeah, that's quite okay. Well, there's a Risk Five buff sometime tomorrow, I think. Or no, is it Saturday? It's Saturday. Sorry, it's on Saturday. And if you if if somebody's not going to be here and has Risk Five things to talk about, you know, feel free to come find me because Risk Five is something I find quite exciting, and would love to do more with. Okay, um, time-wise, I think we're getting relatively close to the end of the time that was allocated. And if, if you got one more thing you want to throw up? I mean, I'm happy to hang around, but I know the video folks would like to wrap up here in another minute or so. I just want to mention that there is a new electronic simulator package, SimulIDE, which <laughs> is most appropriate for educational purposes. Okay. So you can check it out. I haven't seen it. Okay, thanks for letting us know. What's the name of it again? Simul I D E. Simul I T E. Okay. I D E. S I M U L I D E. Got it. Excellent. Thanks for letting us know about that. Okay, with well, with all with that, uh, thank you all very much for your time and your attention. <laughs>